What's up, church family? It's Joshua again. Um, last time we were here, uh, I w we were going through Exodus uh, chapter 20, the Ten Commandments. Uh, we got all the way down to verse 13, so we're going to pick up today where we left off. Um, you shall not commit adultery, verse 14. Apart from the obvious act of adultery, Jesus tells us that if we look upon a woman to lust, and we have then we have committed adultery in our hearts. That applies to our sisters in Christ too, checking out thunder from down under. Just kidding. God, <laughs> God looks at our heart. Crazy thing about this sin is if you compromise and indulge the flesh, when you think no one is looking, it has a lasting effect. The enemy will jump on you, and everywhere you look, that temptation will rear its ugly head. Also, there's an attitude that comes with this. You will become discontent with your spouse, from the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. People think they are slick, but then it comes out and shows itself in our behavior. That's why we should hold every thought captive. Amen. You shall not steal, verse 15. This one was hard for me. I used to be a good thief back in the day. When I was homeless in my youth, I would boost to survive, to make money. I would never steal from people. No, I was too self-righteous for that. I would rob stores blind. so They could afford it, right? Proverbs 6, 30, verse 30. People do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy himself when he is starving. 1 Peter 4, 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, as a thief, as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. I can remember the first time I got jacked. I was in a foster home. I had saved up my allowance. Probably had 30 bucks. That was a king's ransom to my 11-year-old self. But anyhow, a new foster kid moved in, and while I was at school, he went under my mattress and took my money. I could have killed that kid. That's a horrible feeling when you labor for something and a thief comes in and just takes it. But God will not be mocked. Trust me when I tell you from experience that living as a thief, you will pay back every penny and then some. There is no blessing and no future for a thief. Like Peter was alluding to in 1 Peter 4 verse 15, it is a suffering, it is a horrible feeling to be a thief. We have all experienced that, right? It is such a glorious feeling to be redeemed from suffering as an evil doer, as a thief. Verse 16, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. We most commonly associate this commandment with don't be a liar. I can buy that, but there's a special emphasis on lying about other people. Uh, <clears throat> you ever see habitual liars spinning tall tales? They always make a fool of themselves in the end. Even the best liars eventually get exposed. Mark 4 verse 22 For there is nothing hidden which cannot be revealed, nor has anything been kept secret that, can, that sh it should come to light. Proverb 19.5 A false witness will not go unpunished, and he who speaks lies will not escape. Proverb 25, a man who bears false witness against his neighbor is like a club, a sword, a sharp arrow. False witnesses ruin people's lives. Look at what a mess our court systems are today. It's almost impossible without God's discern discernment to tell the truth from the lies. Look, look at our, our current political situation we're in this country. It's scary. Verse 17, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife nor his male servant, nor his female servant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. Covetousness is a sneaky one to fall prey to. It's our fallen, it is in our fallen nature to make constant comparisons to those around us. The sin lies in what we do with that comparison. Do we long for what others have? Let our hearts dwell on those thoughts? <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and 10. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be, de be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. It's not a good group to be named among. Let's hold those thoughts captive, seek correction, and repent when we catch ourselves in covetousness. Think of all the sinful acts that stem from covetousness. It bears some pretty ugly, rotten fruit. Uh, Matthew 5:19. Whoever, whoever therefore breaks one of these commandments and teaches men so, shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. 
but whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So let's try to do the, these, hold these commandments close to our heart and do them. And uh, that way we can be great in the kingdom of heaven. Let me close in prayer. Blessed Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for the law, that it, it, it's a mirror, Lord, that we can see ourselves and see how flawed we are and see how much we need Jesus, Lord, how much we need you, Lord, your, your precious blood. We thank you for the mercy and forgiveness that comes through knowing you. We pray that we would grow in, in wisdom, in your wisdom, and we just love you in Jesus' name. Amen.